Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is AJ Jones. I am a member of the DISC team. We are one of several groups engaged by the HIV AIDS Bureau, or HAB, to provide training and technical assistance to recipients and providers funded by the Health Resources and Services Administration, HIV AIDS Bureau. Today's webinar is presented by Debbie Eisenberg, who is also a member of the DISC team. We support data collection, management, and reporting for HAB, including several reports that we'll talk about in today's session. Today, Debbie is going to talk about reporting requirements for agencies who are funded under the Ending the HIV Epidemic, or EHE, initiative. Throughout today's presentation, we will reference some resources that we think are important. To help you keep track of those and to make sure you have access to them immediately, my colleague David is going to chat out the link to the presentation slides right now, which include all of the resources that we'll mention today. At any time during the presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the Q&A function on the settings bar at the bottom of your screen. All questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar in our live Q&A portion. During that time, you'll also be able to ask questions live if you'd like to unmute yourself and chat with us directly. We love to hear voices other than our own. Now, before we get started today, I'm gonna to answer the most commonly asked question that we get about today's session. The recording of today's webinar will be available on the Target HIV website within about a week of the webinar. The slides are already available for you to access on the Target HIV website using that link that David just chatted out. And note that these slides are not 508 compliant, but we will follow up with all registrants in about a week or two when the 508 compliant slides and written Q&A are posted and available on Target HIV. Today's webinar is supported by the organization shown on the slide, and the contents are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of, nor an endorsement by, the Health Resources and Services Administration, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the U.S. government. Now with all of that intro out of the way, I'm going to turn things over to Debbie for our webinar today. Take it away, Debbie. Thanks so much, AJ. As AJ mentioned, today's session will go over reporting requirements for agencies funded by the HRSA HIV AIDS Bureau ending the HIV epidemic or EHE initiative. If you've been to one of our webinars before, this one is going to be a little bit different. Today, we're going to be talking at a high level about multiple reports that need to be completed rather than focusing on a specific report as we do in most of our webinars. The goal is for you to leave here today with an understanding of what you'll need to do as an EHE initiative funded recipient or provider and to know where to go for more specific guidance. I'm going to start today with a brief overview and then we'll talk through what reports are required for EHE funded recipients and providers. I'll also highlight some common areas of confusion and all of the reports I'm going to be talking about today have resources and webinars available on Target HIV that walk you through the reporting requirements in detail. We'll also share links to some specific webinars that you'll want to review. And you have most of those from what David sent out. We'll also have some time at the end to take any questions that you have. Okay, so let's start with some terminology. And if you went to RSR, the basics, this should look familiar. The first term we will review is recipient. A recipient is an organization that see, receives Ryan White funding that includes EHE initiative funding directly from HRSA HAB. And the recipient can use the Ryan White and or EHE initiative funding to provide direct services, to program clients, and they can also allocate the funding to other organizations to provide direct services. So what is a provider? These are organizations that use Ryan White program and or EHE initiative funding to provide services that range from core medical services and support services, administrative and technical services, and or HIV counseling and testing services. A service provider can be an organization that receives funding from a HRSA HAB recipient, or a service provider can receive funding directly from HRSA HAB, in which case they are called a recipient provider because they're both a recipient and they provide services to eligible clients. So we wanna to start today and find out who's on the call. So I'm gonna ask my colleague David to launch a poll which we're gonna ask you to complete to get a better sense again of who's here today. David, take it away. Thanks, Debbie. So the first poll is launched and the question is, my agency is, choose only one. 
So an, e an EHG initiative funded recipients, metropolitan area or states, an EHG initiative funded provider, an EHG initiative funded recipient slash provider, neither of the above or other, um, of course, please chat that in and I'll give folks a few beats to answer this question. Okay, so I'm going to close the poll and share results. And it seems like a majority are an, an EHG initiative funded recipients, metropolitan area or states. Debbie. Yeah. Thanks so much, David. So I'm looking, it looks like we have some providers and we do have some folks who are recipient providers who wear both hats, uh, a few folks who don't fit into either. So thank you for letting us know. That's super helpful. And I should have mentioned this is an audience participation webinar. So we actually have a second poll that David's going to launch as well. Gets us a little more information again on who's on the call. Okay, so I'm going to launch the second poll. And the question is, in addition to EHG initiative funding, does your agency receive other wine white funding? Part A, B, B supplemental, C, or D? Um, choose one. And the options are, yes, we receive other wine white funding. No, we only receive EHG initiative. And... The last one is, I'm not sure. And I'll give folks a few beats to answer this question. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll and share results. And it seems like a good majority of folks chose the first option is, yes, we receive other wine white funding. Great. Thanks so much, David. And thank you, everyone, for completing the poll. It's super helpful to know who's on the, the uh, webinar with us today. So today's webinar is for HRSA HAB EHE funded recipients and providers, and those of you who are both recipients and providers. For recipients, we're going to discuss the reports that you need to complete, and then we'll do the same for providers. Now, if you're not sure if your EHE initiative funded, feel free to submit a question in the Q&A feature, and that should be a should have a bar, a taskbar, and you should have an option that is for Q&A. Go in and submit that feature uh, question. Just let us know, and we'll follow up with you today after the webinar. So, as I mentioned earlier, there are also other webinars that are specific to each of the reports I'm going to be talking about today. So, I'm not going to repeat what was in those webinars or in upcoming ones, but I'm gonna give you a high level glimpse without getting into the nuance of each. At the end of today's session and in the resources document that David chatted out, you'll find links to these other resources. We're also happy as always to set up a technical assistance call. Just let us know. Again, you can put that in the Q&A, say, I'd like to meet with DISC, and we'll set up a call to talk to you about your technical assistance needs. Now, We've got a common understanding of who the webinar is for. So we're gonna start with going through the reporting requirements for EHG initiative recipients. So EHG recipients are responsible for the following. First, recipients enter contact, contract information into the Grantee Contract Management System or GCMS. As we'll talk through shortly, GCMS automatically fills in two recipient reports that recipients will need to review and complete. One for the EG Triennial Report and one for the Ryan White Services Report or the RSR. Once you've done your recipient reports, you'll assist providers, if needed, in completing their own reports and review and approve their submission. What I want to underscore is that aside from the specific report, and the funding, the high level process is the same. So we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into each of these activities over the next few slides. Let's do a close review of GCMS. GCMS is the central place in the electronic handbooks 
where contracts are entered. It's kind of like the brain for all of the reporting. The EHBs were designed so by completing GCMS, you also complete information indirectly in the other reports. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. All EAG grants start with UT8HA. So if the same person at the recipient's office is completing GCMS for the EAG initiative funding and other Ryan White funding, be sure that you're using the correct grant when you're entering information in GCMS. And the, the grant is automatically populated based on which grant deliverable you use to access GCMS. GCMS also collects basic information about the contract, service categories funded by the grant, as well as the amount for each service category. And again, this should look familiar to you if you're a recipient. It looks a little bit different for Part A and B, but should look familiar. And hopefully the process I'm sharing, you're like, oh, yes, we do that each year. The contracts that you enter in GCMS populate the recipient report. So this is done automatically. You don't have to re-enter the information. So what you're seeing here is the EAT Triannual Recipient Report. You'll see that I have a list of agencies funded under my grant in the program information section. So they receive EAT initiative funding or otherwise they wouldn't be listed here. The exact same information is also used to populate the RSR recipient report, which you're seeing here. So in this example, they don't just receive EAT initiative funding, right? They're also showing up in the RSR recipient report as well, regardless of if it's EAT only or another part funding. So you'll notice this page looks just like the page I just showed you. And that's because these reports collect exactly the same information. They're pre-populated from the same source and reflect which agencies are funded by your grant and for what services they are funded. As a recipient, you'll need to review this information to make sure that all of your providers are listed in the report and that the funded services are correct. Once you've reviewed to make sure all this information is accurate, you'll certify the recipient report so your providers can work on their reports. Once they're done, you also need to review their data and accept their report or request changes, but we're gonna assume for today that your provider's data are all perfect. Next, I'll talk through what needs to be completed for by the EHE funded providers. EHE providers complete the EHE triennial report and the RSR, though these reports are more detailed than the recipient reports we reviewed in the previous sections. Providers are responsible for collecting client level data on who they're serving throughout the year. And I won't get into detail today, but there are many systems that providers use to manage their data and the DIS team provides technical assistance throughout the year on this very topic. As the name implies, the ET Triennial Provider Report is completed three times a year. In addition to verifying basic agency information, providers also report aggregate client counts in their report. This includes a count of all clients who receive services during the reporting period as well as breakdowns by specific service categories, such as outpatient ambulatory health services or OAHS. Finally, these counts also differentiate clients who are new to the agency during the reporting period and those who received services previously. Again, I'm not gonna go into detail on this report, but my colleagues at Ryan White Data Support hosted a fantastic webinar on May 8th that walks through the report in detail and the link is included in your resources. We record all of our webinars, so you have the ability to go back and review them, even if you missed them, or just if you wanna review the information again. EHE funded providers are also required to submit the RSR annually, which is the big data submission that's due at the end of March. The main difference with the RSR is that client level data has to be reported. And because of that, it is the report that's often the most complex and for which we tend to provide a lot of technical assistance. If you're new to the RSR, meaning you've never done it before, or maybe you've done it once, but you uh, would like some additional assistance, 
I'd strongly encourage you to attend the report specific RSR webinars that we'll be hosting this fall and in the spring of 2025 to help prepare you for the submission. And again, that link is included in the resources you have, and I'll be highlighting that during today's webinar. So I've talked about the reports, but I haven't said which clients should be included in the reports. And now I will. Both reports use what's called eligible services reporting. This means that clients should be included in the report if they meet two criteria. First, they are eligible. And second, that they received a service for which your agency received each initiative or other Ryan White or Ryan White related funding regardless of the payer. What I really want to ensure is clear is that the clients who should be included are the same for both reports. What is different is the time frame. Each is a four month period while the RSR is a 12 month period. So I know that was a lot of information I just went over and I mentioned this was an audience participation webinar. So we have a few knowledge checks, just wanna make sure this made sense. And I'm gonna turn things over to David for the knowledge checks, David. Okay, so I'm gonna launch the first knowledge check. And the question is, a provider receives Ryan White Part A and HRSA HAB and EHG initiative funding for medical case management services. The provider should report all eligible clients who receive medical case management in and choose one. So the first one is no reports. Second one is the RSR provider reports. The third one is the EHG triannual provider reports. And the last one is both provider reports. And I'll give folks a few beats to answer this. Okay, I'm going to end the poll and share results. And it seems like a good majority have chosen uh, both provider reports, Debbie. Great, thanks. And, and that is actually the correct answer. Uh, remember that you have to do both the EG triangle report and the RSR, both reports. Okay, I'm going to now, David, we're going to do one more, I believe. I had a knowledge check number two. Okay, I'm going to launch it. And so the question is, a provider receives HRSA HAB EHG initiative funding for medical case management services. Um, the provider should report all eligible clients who receive medical case management in and choose one. So the options are no reports, the RSR provider reports, the EHG triannual provider reports, and both provider reports. And I'll give folks a few beats to answer this. Okay, I'm going to close the polls and share results. And it seems like a good majority have chosen both provider reports for this one as well. Thanks, David. I know we, someone, you may have said, oh, this, this was the same thing, and it actually wasn't. There was a small difference. In the first knowledge check, the provider received both Part A and HRSA EAG initiative funding. Had, um, so they had both. In the second example, they also had they only had the EHG initiative funding. You'll notice that the answer didn't change. And that's because you have to do both reports. If they only had Part A funding, they wouldn't do the EHG triangle report. But since they got EHG, they're going to do both reports. It actually doesn't matter what other Ryan White funding they get. They're still going to do both reports. So hopefully that helped to clarify. But again, we have the Q and A part of the webinar. So if you still have a question, feel free to put it in the Q&A and we'll make sure to get to it at the end of the webinar. Thanks, David. Give folks a break now. So we've covered which reports have to be done. We've talked about which clients should be reported. So let's talk briefly about data quality. Both the EG Triennial Provider Report and the RSR Provider Report are used to demonstrate the impact of funded activities. So it is essential that the data reported accurately reflect the important work that you're doing. 
both recipients and providers share responsibility for reporting high quality data. Now, I'm not going into detail about how to check the data quality because it's actually covered in other webinars. However, I am going to share a strategy that can give you an idea if there are data quality issues in the reports, and that is comparing the EHE Triennial Provider Report and the RSR. And this approach is based on reports that have already been submitted. So you may be wondering why bother reviewing reports that have already been submitted? Well, it can help you identify that there is a reporting issue. If you don't know something's wrong, you can't fix it for a future submission. You may also be wondering how you can compare the ET Triennial Provider Report and the RSR Provider Report. One's aggregate, one's client level. Well, remember when I told you earlier, it's the same clients and services, but a different time frame. Okay, so here's how you can check. Start with the most recent RSR that a provider has submitted. So both recipients and providers, since we have both on the call, can access past RSRs that have been submitted. And the most recent one would be the 2023 RSR that was just submitted this past March. You can quickly see the number of total clients submitted in two ways. First, in the report inbox, the number of clients is displayed before you even open the report. The same number is displayed in the header of the report itself. In this example, there were 1,335 clients submitted in the 2023 RSR. Next, let's check out any of the ET Triennial Provider Reports submitted for a reporting period in 2023. In this example, I used the one, the January 1 to April 30th period, and that was a total of 20 clients reported that had a service for which the agency received ET Initiative, Ryan White, or Ryan White related funding. So does this look correct? And no, there's not a poll or knowledge check, you can answer in your heads, but does it look correct? 20 clients for four months and more than a thousand clients in 12 months. So it seems like something's wrong here. That's a big difference. Okay, so you can also review the reports in more detail. Specifically, you can compare the service categories reported. And again, recipients can do this and providers can do this. In this example, I have the 2023 RSR Upload Completeness Report on the left-hand side and the January 1 to April 30th, 2023 ET Triennial Provider Report on the right-hand side. So first, I'm gonna compare total clients. This is a different example. So 562 clients in the RSR compared to 85 clients. There's red boxes around both in the ET Triennial Provider Report. So that seems low. Again, the RSR is for 12 months, ET Triennial Provider Report is for four months. All right, so let's, let's keep checking. Next, I wanna check the OAHS services. Okay, 450 clients in the RSR compared to 40 clients in the ET Triennial Provider Report. Again, the, the ET Triennial Provider Report seems too low. Even for four months, seems too low. Then I'm gonna check mental health services. And this is where we know there's a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. The ET Triennial Provider Report has 30 clients who receive mental health services, while there's no clients who were, were reported in the RSR, so it's zero. So we know that's definitely incorrect. Now, one quick note, while the RSR Upload Completeness Report includes all service categories, I'm not showing them here just because of space, the ET Triennial Provider Report does not list all service categories. All clients should be reported in row one, and then the applicable service categories are reported in the other rows. It doesn't include all the service categories, it only includes some of them. So you can only do a comparison on the total clients and the service categories that match. Now, I know this review is more complicated, and we can help you. The DIST team can help you with this review. If you are an ET recipient, we can review uh, all of your providers or some of your providers. That's up to you. If you're an EHE initiative funded provider, we can review the submission with you. Just let us know. And really, this is about identifying if there's been a reporting issue that you might be unaware of, and it helps you focus on moving forward, making sure those data are accurately submitted. Oh, almost made him skip the poll, David. 
So we do have a poll just to check in. And this isn't really a right or wrong. It's just how you feel. So David, go ahead and launch the poll. Okay. So the third poll is launched. And the question is, how confident are you in the data you submitted on these reports? Choose all that apply. The first choice is, I'm not sure. I haven't done the reports yet. I'm not confident in my data for the RSR. I'm confident in my data for the EHG triannual reports. And the last one is, I'm not confident in my data for the EHG triannual reports. I'll give folks a few beats to answer this, and then I'll close the polls. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll and share results. And it seems like a good amount of folks puts um, the first three choices, Debbie. Okay, thanks so much. So we have some folks who haven't done this yet. It's about half, right? So we're, we're actually, it's great timing because there's a report open right now, EAT Triennial provide a report. Um, a lot of folks who are confident, which is great in both the RSR and the EAT Triennial report, and then small number who aren't as confident. So. Again, something for everyone in this webinar. Thank you for letting us know, though, as we've reviewed what the requirements are, we did want to check back in and make sure that align with what you were doing. And don't worry, if you need to make improvements, that is exactly why we were here. All right. So we're going to move on to some common areas for confusion. This is based on technical assistance uh, questions that both the DIS team and Ryanway Data Support have received. And we will often repeat these, and that's because they're really important to help make sure that they're um, clarified for you as folks who are doing the submission. Okay? All right. So perhaps the most common one we hear is which client should be in the EG Triennial Provider Report. And yes, I know, it's called the EG Triennial Provider Report, but it includes more than EG Initiative Funded Services if you're, the provider receives other Ryan White or Ryan White related funding. So it includes everything. So if it's if they only receive EG initiative funding, yes, that's the only thing that goes in. But if they receive part A, B, B supplemental, C, D, or Ryan White related funding for those parts, all of that goes in the EG triennial provider report. Okay, so the next common area for confusion is service categories. Now, there is a service category called EG Initiative Services, and the funding is called EG Initiative Funding. But here's the big but. All EG Initiative Funded Services should not, that's a not, be reported as EG Initiative Services. The only reason you use that service category, because it is a service category, is if the activities being funded do not fit the definition of the service categories in Policy Clarification Notice or PCN 1602. So recipients should provide clear guidance to their funded providers regarding which service categories to use. And if you're not sure, our colleagues at Ryan White Data Support, and I will share contact information at the end of the webinar, can absolutely review this with you. So if that wasn't enough to encourage you to report correctly, let me give you another good reason. If you're using EG Initiative Services when an existing PCN 1602 service category aligns with the activity, you may be increasing the required data for the RSR. So remember, the data required for the RSR is based on the service that the client receives. So let's use an example. Say you're implementing activities that align with the outreach service category, but instead of using that service category, you're using EG Initiative Services. There are nine data elements required for clients receiving outreach services. There are 18 data elements required for clients receiving EG Initiative Services. There's twice as many data elements required for a client receiving EG Initiative Services. Now, if none of the categories in PCN 1602 fit, yes, definitely use EG Initiative Services, but you want to ensure that you're using the right service category. You may inadvertently, if you're using the wrong one, actually be, be increasing the data burden required to be reported for clients. All right. A newer issue, I think we started hearing about this last year, 
is recipients applying reporting requirements to eligibility requirements. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. For the RSR, the data elements, as I just shared, that are required to be reported are based on the services that the client receives, so it varies. There are four service categories that require federal poverty level percent. Outpatient ambulatory health services, medical case management, non-medical case management, and EG initiative services. The confusion comes when recipients are using EG initiative funding for these four service categories. While you should report the data if you have it, you should not be including FPL or federal poverty level as an eligibility requirement, meaning income, for EEG initiative services. Federal poverty level or income may be gathered at a later time for clients receiving EEG initiative funded services, say when you're checking to see if they're eligible for Ryan White services, and then providers can report it with their data. HAB understands that there may be more missing FPL percent data if EEG initiative funding is used for these four service categories. Just report what you have, and when you have to write a validation comment, explain why the data are missing. But do not change the eligibility requirements in order to report federal poverty level percent. Okay. All right, final area of confusion. First, providers will only ever have to do one RSR provider report and one EEG triennial provider report. It's one and one. It doesn't matter if they receive only EEG initiative funding, EEG initiative funding and other Ryan White funding, or EEG initiative funding from more than one recipient. It's always the same. It's always one and one. Your approach to completing the reports may differ, and this is both the recipient approach and a provider approach. That's what may differ, not the number of reports, but your approach. Let me tell you, uh, let me share what I mean by that. Okay, so this is for recipients. If a provider only receives HRSA HAB EG initiative funding from one recipient and no Ryan White funding, the review by a recipient is pretty straightforward. That's because the recipient would be familiar with the data expected in the reports. However, if a provider receives EG initiative funding and also receives Ryan White funding, it's different. And again, that's because the reports include more than just EG initiative funding. It may also include Ryan White funding from your organization. That's because part A and B recipients also receive the EG initiative funding or Ryan White funding from another organization or even EG initiative funding from another organization. Remember the report includes all eligible clients who receives services for which the agency receives EG initiative or Ryan White funding. You may only be familiar with some of the information in the report, and that means you may need to collaborate internally with your Ryan White counterpart in your organization to review reports or externally with other recipients. Providers have a different challenge. Providers have to be sure that all of the data that is required for both EG initiative, Ryan White, and also Ryan White related funding, that it's all included in both reports. Similar to recipients, if a provider only receives EG initiative funding from one recipient, it's likely that the required data is in one data system, so it's pretty straightforward to submit. Where it gets more complicated is if providers also receive Ryan White, Ryan White related funding, or other HRSA HAB EG initiative funding. We know it's common that recipients require their funded providers to use a specific data system. So the likelihood is that if you receive funding from more than one recipient, you probably have data in more than one RSR ready system. Now for the RSR, you can upload more than one XML file. That's just the file format that's required for the RSR. So if you have data in more than one RSR ready system, you can upload more than one file and the system will merge the data. However, you can't do that for the EG Triennial Provider Report, and you also can't just add the aggregate numbers together across the different data systems. So what are your options? Well, if you have all of your data in one system that isn't RSR ready, so your agency uses a system overall for everything, and then you're putting it in different RSR ready systems, you can actually run the data from that data system and enter the combined aggregate numbers in the report. You can also contact us at the DIST team. We can talk through your processes so we understand how data is captured 
and come up with a submission game plan that works for you. One more note, many of the RSR Ready systems have creative reports for the EET Triennial Provider Report. The report, again, includes EET Initiative funded, Ryan White and Ryan White related funded services and the clients who receive those services. For those of you who are CARER users, there's a report in CARER that will create the data needed for the EG Triennial Provider Report. It is, again, important to remember that the report includes eligible clients who received EG Initiative, Ryan White, or Ryan White related funded services. And it's a great report for the EG Triennial Provider Report, but it's actually not a great report for recipients to use for monitoring their subrecipients' EG Initiative funded activities in the cases where providers are receiving other funding, right? So if, if more than just EG initiative is in that data system, it's all gonna get pulled together, right? The Ryan White and Ryan White related will be in the report. So you can't then use it to monitor only EG initiative activities. All right, a lot more information. We have a few more knowledge checks. I'm gonna turn things over to David. Thanks, Debbie. So the next child knowledge check has been launched and is true or false. A provider receives EHE funding, initiative funding for medical case management services because the provider's only funding is, is EHE initiative. They are not required to report federal poverty level in the RSR client level data. And the options are true or false. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll and share the results. So it seems like 60% have chosen true and 40% chose false, Debbie. All right, thanks, David. So this one's a hard one. Um, the correct answer is actually false, okay? Because federal poverty, what the key there was what they are not required to report it, right? It is a reporting requirement, federal poverty level for clients who receive medical case management, and that's regardless of the funding source. While you should report the data if you have it, you should not be, again, including uh, gathering income as part of eligibility requirements for EHE initiative services. So you may gather it at a later time. If you don't have it, you enter a comment, but it still is a reporting requirement. And that was the key in that one. It was a hard one. All right, let's try another one. Should have one more knowledge check, David. Okay, I'm gonna launch it right now. So the knowledge check is a provider receives Ryan White Part A, Ryan White Part B, and EHE initiative funding. Which report or reports will the provider have to submit? The, the options are the EHE Triannual Provider Report, RSR Provider Report, and one EHE Triannual Provider Report, or RSR Provider Reports and one EHE tri Triannual Provider Report. Okay, I'm going to close the polls and share results. So around 70% of folks chose one RSR provider report and one EHE triannual provider reports. And the rest of the folks chose three RSR provider reports and one EHE triannual provider reports. Great. Thanks, David. So this is this is also, I, I particularly picked harder questions later in the webinar, right? So the correct answer is the one in one. That's always the answer, one in one. Um, and that's because you'll never do more than one report. There is no part specific report for the RSR. So they do get three parts funding. They get part A, part B, and then EG initiative. It's still only one provider report for the RSR, one provider report for the EAT triennial provider report. So that will never change. It's always one and one. But it's a hard one. I, I did have hard questions here at the end. All right, so let's review some resources. And if you're worried because you got questions wrong, don't worry, that's why we're here, right? If everyone got the questions right, we wouldn't do the webinars. That is exactly why we're here. All right, 
So I'm going to share some resources. These links that you're seeing, some of them are for past webinars, some of them are for upcoming webinars. These are also part of the, the resource uh, list that David sent out. Uh, the first two I have in here are for recipients. The last two are for providers. One of them is uh, will be planned for spring 2025. So the actual date isn't out yet, but as long as you are part of the listserv, I'll show you how to join that in a moment. Um, we'll notify you when that is out. So these are just a sampling. Two of them are recorded. You can review those. And there's a data webinar calendar. That's every webinar that we do. That's the link on the bottom. If you look at that, you'll see there's other webinars. I kind of highlighted some, I'd say at a minimum, make sure you, you uh, review these, but there's a lot of other webinars that you can participate in. All right. There's also a lot of technical assistance materials on target HIV. That is the home of all the Ryan White resources. If you haven't had a, a chance to check it out yet, this list again is on the handout. So there's a manual and this is the GCMS manual that's for recipients. That's a task they have. The RSR instruction manual and the ET triennial report manual. Again, recipients and providers can both use that. A lot of guidance written down. Those are updated every year. So you may notice that the RSR instruction manual still says 2023. The updated version is not out yet. And really that's usually just additional clarifications or in the event of a reporting change that will be highlighted as well. There is a resource that the DIS team created. It's called an EHE in Focus. Um, these in focus documents are usually short, not longer than four pages. And it highlights the reporting requirements for EHG initiative funded providers. And then I mentioned about the DISC listserv. So if you click on that, what you're going to get is a choice to sign up for emails. We don't email a lot, but what we email is really important. It's usually tied to reporting updates or if the system is open, or even if there was an issue we need to let you know about. So you can pick which report. And for folks on the call today, it would be EHG and RSR. Okay. I also want to be sure that the reporting due dates are kind of on your radar. As I mentioned earlier, the ET Triennial Provide Report is due three times a year. It's the system's actually open now for the period of May 1st through August 31st. We know it's a busy time for you um, because you have the report due. I think you're also working on some other applications. So there's a lot going on. The report is due October 15th. It is possible that your recipient set, an, if you're a provider, your recipient may set an earlier deadline. They are allowed to do that. They have to ensure that they meet the overall deadline across all the providers by October 15th. The RSR is submitted once a year. The report opens on Monday, December 2nd. It's always the first Monday in December. That's for recipients. For providers, it's the first Monday in February. And it's always due the last Monday in March at six o'clock Eastern. Again, your recipient may set an earlier deadline to ensure that all of the providers have a chance to finish. Now we have one more poll before we finish. I'm gonna let David launch the poll. I promise this one's easy because whatever you answer is the right answer. David? Okay, the poll has been launched. And the question is, which of the following best describes your current TA needs for meeting reporting requirements for the EHG initiative funded recipients and providers. The options are, I'm good, but thanks for asking. I might need assistance, but we'll let you know. And the last one is, I definitely need assistance, so please reach out. And I'll give folks a few beats to answer this question. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and share results. So it seems like a good amount of folks chose I'm good, but thanks for asking at 34%. I might need assistance, but we'll let you know at 47. And I definitely need assistance. So please reach out at 19%. Great. Thanks, David. So those of you who said I definitely need assistance, uh, we will reach out to you. You don't have to do anything else. You let us know. We'll reach out to you. You'll, be, you'll get an email from the DIS team. If appropriate, we're going to pull in our, our colleagues at Ryan White Data Support. We want to ensure that you get the support you need. Um, if you might need assistance, let me make sure to highlight how you find us, right? And this is a technical assistance resources brochure that's available, again, on Target HIV. You'll see there's multiple resources available. And this brochure outlines information about each technical assistance provider and includes the reports they support, 
frequently asked questions they can respond to and the best contact information. Um, most importantly, I wanna underscore, there is no wrong door for technical assistance. So don't worry about spending time on, I'm not sure who I should reach out to, just reach out. If you reach out to us and it's a question that data support is better equipped to handle, we will make that warm handoff for you. We will connect you to data support. We just wanna make sure you get the help you need. So please just go ahead and reach out. We'll make sure you get to the right technical assistance provider. Okay, and finally, to connect with and find out more about HRSA, check out hrsa.gov. And now I want to turn things back over to my colleague, AJ, for the Q&A portion of the webinar.